An asymptomatic person releases virions in saliva microdroplets when exhaling air. These microdroplets can contain up to 500 virions. The microdroplets are randomly dispersed and their trajectory is directed by the wind. In open places the microdroplets can reach up to 6 meters, but dissipate quickly. If you are 1.5 meters from an infected person you can inhale certain microdroplets. If they enter through the nose they find structures called nasal turbinates, these cause turbulence in the air we breathe. So when passing through the nose the microdrops stick to surfaces. But before it can reach a cell, the virus has to pass through a protective layer of mucus. With the first proteins that the virion stumbles upon entering the mucus are the mucins, these filamentous proteins give the mucus its viscosity, the mucins form molecular networks that trap particles in the mucus, impeding their movement. But virions are very small and the spike proteins are highly glycosidated, these oligosaccharides repel each other due to their negative charges and the virus moves slowly, slipping between the mucins. But then, the virion is attacked by proteins called defensins, these proteins contain a positively charged part and a hydrophobic part. When approaching the viral membrane the defensins are attracted by the negative charge of the phospholipids, then their hydrophobic part fits into the membrane and destabilizes it. This kills the virion breaking it open, causing its contents to spill out. More virions keep passing the mucus barrier and defensins proteins keep destroying them, but little by little these proteins are used up and more virions continue to cross the mucus layer. But defensins are not the only defense in mucus, it also contains complement proteins that are even more aggressive against pathogens. The m protein binds to the oligosaccharides of the spike protein, together a protease called MASP1 is activated, it hydrolyzes and activates the protease MASP2. MASP2 cuts and activates the C4 protein in two parts, the C4A and the C4B. The C4B part is covalently attached to the virus membrane. Then C2 binds to C4B and is hydrolyzed by MASP2 in two parts, C2A and C2B, to form the C4BC2 a complex or also called C3 convertase. The C3 convertase begins to massively hydrolyze the C3 proteins into two parts C3A and C3B. The C3B parts get covalently attached to the membrane. C3B couples with C4B, C2A to form the C4B, C2A, C3B complex called C5 convertase. C5 convertase begins to massively hydrolyze the C5 proteins into two parts, C5A and C5B. C5B inserts itself into the membrane of the virion and binds with the protein C6, C7 and C8 to form a protein complex that begins to insert C9 proteins into the membrane and forms a pore that destroys the permeability of the membrane and the virion is disordered until death. However, some virions outlive the mucus defenses and continue to pass through it slowly. The mucus also contains type A immunoglobulins that could end up eliminating the remaining virions, but the spike protein is almost completely covered by oligosaccharides that serve as shields that block the immunoglobulins. There are exposed places in the spike protein, but this virus is new in the world population and very few people contain immunoglobulins related to the exposed parts of the protein. Despite all these defenses, certain virions manage to survive the innate defenses of the mucosa and reach a less hostile second layer of mucus. Now the virions are about to interact with the cells of the nasal epithelium in search of receptors that help it to fuse its membrane with that of the cell. This was the immunity of the mucous membranes, a fundamental part of the innate defenses that detects and destroys most of the pathogens that try to invade our body. In the next episode, we will see binding and entry. Don't forget to like and follow us on our Quantum Rabbit page.